Hello and welcome. My name is Martin, and today we're going to be creating our second uh, enemy. Uh, this enemy is going to be slightly different from the first one in the fact that we will actually create motion from this. So first thing we want to do is click on our project file, right click on it, say copy, and let's paste that into the same project or the same folder so that way they're sitting next to each other. Of course, we're going to go ahead and rename this and let's call this project three underscore H missile. Okay, so it's going to be a homing missile because of the motion. So again, we're using the project name to describe what each one of the enemies are doing. So let's double click on the project name itself and I I guess it's already called Project 3, so maybe I messed up on the other one. Hopefully you guys caught that. All right, so I just want to make sure everything's okay. Uh, let's go to Project 2, and yeah, okay. Let me go ahead and rename this, and that way it's correct. For all those that caught it, good for you. Okay, so just to double check. Project 1 is Project 1. Project 2 is Project 2. Project 3 is Project 3. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to double click into Project 3. We're going to double click on the project folder and go ahead and open. So, um, in this project, we are going to create a uh, pretty much the same mechanics as far as the way that the cube operates. It's going to explode on contact either by a projectile or by, um, by us running into it. Um, the, the lovely thing about this is all we have to do is copy and paste the original one and actually create our second, uh, our second cube from that. Uh, so we're going to already have that code ready for us so we don't have to duplicate that again. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Let's go into our content folder. Let's go into Evil Cubes. Uh, let's go ahead and create an individual folder for Evil Cubes. Uh, not that we needed to in the first project, but now that we're creating uh, a secondary uh, cube, it's better to be organized and uh, be safe. So let's go ahead and grab uh, the first one and drag it into there. And yes, well, it's going to ask us, do we want to move it here? Do we want to copy? We want to move it there. Um, so we'll have a folder that now contains that. Let's move back out to the content evil cubes folder. We're going to make a copy of this folder. So let's go ahead and uh, click on it and hit control C and click into the empty space and click control B. Then that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Uh, let's right click. Do we just have a duplicate here? Okay. You know what? We're just going to create a folder. So we'll create a new folder. We'll call it H missile. Okay, and we're going to go into S main, grab this, and control C to copy, and let's go back to evil cubes, H missile, and control V to paste. Fantastic. Once we've got the pawn in there, we're going to click on the pawn and rename it. So this is now going to be called H, capital score, and move that out of the way so I can see, missile. All right. Now, with this, miss, uh, with this, let's go ahead and uh, go into the pawn itself. And actually, you know what? Let's not do that real quick. Let's actually create the AI first. So with this pawn, we are going to be attaching it to an AI. So uh, what the AI is, is auto, uh, artificial intelligence. It's going to tell the pawn what to do uh, based on which class of AI we, we connect to it. Uh, so um, with this, let's go ahead and create the AI. So let's click into the empty space where you can click on add new in your content browser. So let's right click and go into uh, blueprint class. And it's not going to be one of the options that we have there. So we're actually going to have to type that in by clicking into all classes and typing in AI. And we should see one that's called controller. This is what we want. It's going to look like a little uh, uh, honestly, it looks like a little football trophy. So let's click on this and click select. And let's go ahead and call this H missile underscore AI. So then that way we know what it is. And that's what I mean. Okay, so it's a circle on top of a cone. All right, so once we've got the AI there, let's go ahead and double click in the AI. 
Uh, there's not going to be anything visually that we need to see, so we don't need to see anything in the viewport. We do, however, want to go to the event graph and uh, create a couple of things here. So this is going to be what generates the motion for the, the cube itself. So on the event play, what we want to do is drag out and type in set timer. Uh, and we want this timer to be by a function name, which we're going to create here in just a second. So, um, oh, which we're actually going to create just now. Let's go ahead and call this follow, uh, follow player. And from this now, we're going to right click in this area and we're going to type in custom event, not customer event, custom event. Sorry, I've been in retail too long. And let's go ahead and call it the same thing as the function name up here. So let's type this in as follow player. Okay, so now we have when the game starts, there's going to be a timer. That timer is going to be looking for, or it's going to be uh, redirecting itself to a function called follow player. We now have a custom event that we have created from that that will also be called custom uh, follow player. Uh, and the other thing that we also need to do is tell it to time. So uh, every one second, it will start redirecting itself to the character. Uh, if you do this too fast, it might look jittery. If you do it too slow, it might be part of the dynamics that you're setting up for the character. Maybe every, uh, maybe the character loses sight of where, uh, where the character is, uh, because every five seconds it recalibrates. So it'll see the character, move towards it, uh, wait five seconds, recalibrate, and if you're not there, uh, you're going to be out or, or out of the area. Maybe the character doesn't chase you, whatever. Uh, we also want to make sure that this continues to keep happening. So we do want to make sure that looping has been checked. All right. So now off of our yeah, the custom event that we just created, let's uh, click off of there and type in AI uh, move to and AI move to. And this is going to be a task. So this is going to be assigning a task to the cube uh, to do this every time it senses us or it sees us in the area. Uh, the two things that we need to do is get the pawn itself. So we need to get the controller for the pawn. So get uh, controller pawn or the controlled pawn. So this is going to be the S missile. And the other thing that we need to do is now attach it to the target actor. So let's type in get player character. All right. All right. So that's all we need to write for our code. So let's explain what we're doing here. So once again, when this begins, it's going to every second uh, tag back to this function, which is underneath a custom event now. Uh, so every one second, and we want this to keep looping so that the event never stops. It's always constantly looking for you. So underneath our custom event, we are now telling that custom event to move, so create an AI move to. What it's moving is the pawn, and what it's moving to is the character, and it's going to be checking within a radius of five, uh, of, of a radius of five away from the character to look for this event. Okay, so from there we have now written all the code that we need to for the AI. So let's go ahead and hit compile and save. Let's close this. And theoretically now what we now have done is created the brain. So we now have the brain and we need to stick that inside of the body. And the body is going to be the cube. So let's double click on the cube and let's make sure that the brain and the body are connected to each other. Now, the wonderful thing is that this is opened up in the event graph and all the stuff from the S missile, uh, from the, from the mine that we created earlier, as far as the conditions that happen when the cube is touched are already there. So it's going to turn into a sprite. It's going to explode. The sprite's going to disappear and the cube is going to be gone. Um, let's go ahead and I, you know what, let's tidy this up a little bit just since we're here and we have the time anyway. And since we're not too far away, from this uh, from this previous tutorial, I just want to make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, let's do that. Let's do this. 
And let's grab that. Sorry, I'm just being nitpicky. Okay, now the other thing we can also do is click across all of this, right click on one of these and say create custom content selection. And if we want to, we can go ahead and say that this is um, cube explosion, right? Because technically that's what's happening. All right, hit compile and save. All right, so with new information now, what we need to do first is we need to go ahead and add the movement itself, what type of movement this character is going to be having. So let's add that in our components panel underneath add components. We're going to want to type in uh, floating. So let's type in floating pawn movement. And so now we have a way that the pawn can move. It's going to float across some surface. All right. Uh, the other thing we need to do is tie the AI into the cube. So if you if you click in the components panel underneath uh, and you click the H missile self, you will get in the details panel information about how the pawn is going to be controlled. We are going to see AI controller class, and right now it's tied it's tied into it doesn't it's actually tied into uh, uh, not one that we want. Let's type the let's go into the H missile HI. So now it will be doing or or be looking for the situation that is programmed into the AI. Uh, from there, the next thing that we need to do is go into the cube. And what I would like to do with this is give it a different look, uh, just so that we know what's the difference between the mine itself and what the uh, homing missile might look like, right? So here, let's give this, uh, I don't know, let's say if I have a sand. Okay, so I do have a rock sandstone material, so I guess this all my enemies are going to be um, silicon based. Uh, so we have that now. Let's double check in the viewer to see that that has now changed. And uh, the only other thing we need to do is change how this thing actually moves. Okay, so um, in the components panel underneath floating pawn movement, if you click on it, and go into the details panel, you will now see uh, underneath floating pawn movement, the max speed that this thing can travel at. Now, if it's a homing missile, uh, maybe it needs to travel fast, right? We would uh, assume that a missile moves fast and if it's homing, it's gonna move, I don't know, faster than you can react to it, right? So let's go ahead and click this and let's make it, I don't know, about 3000 on the speed. That should make it plenty fast. The acceleration is how fast it goes from zero to top speed. So if you wanted to make it incredibly fast, like it gets right to the player, very, very, uh, it goes from zero to 3000 at this acceleration speed. For now, 4000 is good enough. Uh, the area that we're working in is quite small. Remember that the whole area is 4000. So uh, this thing is going to feel fast anyways. Uh, from there, deceleration, that's how quickly it will lose its velocity, but we don't need to change that. And let's not worry about the, that as well. So the one thing that we're changing here is making sure that the max speed is a little bit faster. Okay, let's go ahead and hit compile and save. That should be everything. We'll check and make sure that this is going to work. Now, before we actually start, uh, we have the pawn. We have created the, the information for the AI. We now have the AI connected to the body, right? So we have the brain connected to the body, but we haven't defined an area where this pawn can move inside. So in order to do this, we're gonna go into volumes. Uh, we're going to go into navigation mesh, uh, mesh boundaries, and we're gonna click and drag one of these onto the area. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to give the pawn an area to be able to work inside. Uh, so let's go ahead and size this to the scale of the platform that we created in the first project. Uh, and let's expand that out. And let's expand this out. And let's move this back so it's filling up most of the area. And let's make sure that it actually covers the whole area. OK, 
Okay, and that's pretty good. I might just extend that out a little bit more. Put it through the wall. And make sure that we're covering that. And okay. The other thing we want to make sure that it is actually not above the area or below the area, the, the, the navigation mess. So in order to check to see what the navigation mess is actually making contact with, we should be able to hit the letter P. And right now we don't see any green. So what we're looking for is this. This is telling us what area the pawn itself will be able to move into. Now, um, if it's obviously too low, it's not going to be affecting the platform that we're working on. This is good. Uh, if it's too high, it's also not affecting the area. We can see that it's now affecting these. Now, in later tutorials, we may... Uh, I, I, you know what? Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Let's go into the Z-axis and actually pull it up. And so then that way it's affecting both the top of the platforms and the bottom. Uh, the way we have it now, if the pawn... Uh, the pawn will be able to move to you if you're up here or down there. So if it sees you and you're within its radius, it will be able to see you if you're up on a platform. If uh, we had this to where, let's say this was like this, the pawn now only has the ability to move here and may or may not actually see you up there. Depends on what kind of sensing you have set up for the pawn. All right. So with that, we should be able to test this now. So let's go ahead, before we do anything else, save. Uh, save now here in the content browser. And let's hit File, Save All, just to make sure that we haven't missed anything. And I'm, you know what, uh, let's leave the, the S missiles in there, just so we have other stuff to shoot at if we get bored. And let's grab the homing missile. And let's pull that... Now the other thing we need to make sure is that it's actually affected in the area that we want to. And in order to know that it is, is we'll see this little kind of like boundary box that's around it. If it's here, obviously it's not contacting a surface, so it won't be able to actually move across a, a linear surface. So let's put it there and let's grab a secondary one. I don't know, let's put this one here. And let's put one back here for fun. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this level and see that everything is working correctly. So let's hit play. So, whoa. All right. So fun. Uh, what just happened? Uh, the pawns themselves, as they came towards us, they did explode. Uh, but they actually pushed me out of the area. They didn't stop where I needed them to stop. Um, so what we're going to have to do is work with the collision boxes and make sure that the pawns themselves uh, close, uh, actually stop where we need them to stop and that they explode where they need to explode and also don't push us off of the area. Okay, so we're going to stop this tutorial here. We'll do, we'll answer those questions in the second tutorial. I don't want to make these things too long, and this one is already 18 minutes in length. So, uh, second, to, uh, second part of this tutorial will be covering, uh, making sure that the pawns actually explode on contact. All right, hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>